uh, next presenter, five minute presenter, I've been looking forward to this with my uh, background. Uh, Don Cockrell um, is representing the UK Maritime Pilots Association and he's going to talk to us about why climate change matters to maritime pilots. Don. Very good afternoon. Let's see if we can compress a 50 minute presentation into five minutes. You can do it. <laughs> I'm sure we can. Is it the green button I'm pushing? Yes. The big, the big green button. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay, um, we bring a little bit of reality to all this. Um, we've heard an awful lot about uh, meteorological effects and uh, increased storm effectiveness. This is a, um, it's not a, an, an everyday normal event, but it's not an unusual event under current conditions. This is the sort of thing that pilots all around the world are facing on a day-to-day -day basis, at the upper end of the operational limits as it happens. And as you can see, it's not a very nice place to be. Imagine trying to do that in the dark at night as well. So fundamental to any port operation is we've got to get the ships in and out of the port. And to get the ships in and out of the port, we have to get the pilots on and off the ships. Just something to, to think about. Oh, there we go. Okay, the, the major element that we have to deal with is the wind. All right, it stands to reason. And this is pretty typical of what is becoming the, the global workhorse of international trade. Um, we've, you've got a ship like this, any sort of wind on the side of it is obviously going to have a significant effect as to how you manoeuvre it. Um, 15 metres per second wind is about 30 knots, not an unusual strong breeze for many places of the world, but it's about 250 tonnes of force on the side of the ship. It takes a lot of handling. The problem is they want us to fit in places like this, and these were built, this is Marshalslock in southern Malta, a modern port, but it was built without those big ships in mind, but they put them in there. The wind is going to have a, a big effect on that. Once you start walking at water levels, yeah, rising sea levels, you'd think from a shipping perspective, that's going to be good. We're going to have more water to run with. The trouble is, with more rain, we get more runoff. With more runoff, we get more tired, um, current flow from rivers. Higher water levels, we don't really know what's going to happen with the rising sea level, how that's going to affect tidal cycles. Yeah, we're going to get higher high waters, but it's highly probable we're going to get lower low waters, and we're certainly going to get stronger tidal streams. And that's going to affect the way that you operate ships in tidal streams. We're going to get increased siltation, we've heard already, and we could well end up with effects like this. This isn't due to increased siltation, but nonetheless, what we've got is a, is a, a big container ship sitting high and dry on a, on a, a bank in a river, um, on the Elbe, if you're interested. Um, okay, so we go on there. Visibility. We talked about increased visibility or reduction in visibility, fog. Visibility is a killer, bad visibility, be no doubt about it, and so you cannot take it for granted. If we get extended periods of visibility, Robin was mentioning from our own port in London, the potential for that. The problem is you've got extended periods of visibility. You can't move the ship so easily, if at all, depending on the regulations you've got. Commercial pressure comes to bear, and you can end up with dreadful situations like this. That happened in one UK port a few years ago, where commercial pressure pushed the ship to move when really, in hindsight, it shouldn't move. And uh, the end result was the ship overran a tug, three people killed on the tug. Just commercial pressure through bad visibility. Something to think about the way your ports are going to operate under climate change effects. So what are we going to do about it? Well, the um, traffic flows, as we say, the, the port operations, are, we all know this, this is stating the obvious, they're going to be affected by climate change and ship operations. Okay. What does the ports have to do? The port authorities need to work with the pilotage authorities. Every port in the world is different. So every authority is different. The relationships are different everywhere in the world. Needs to, to talk about it. I learned a lot just listening to Robin this morning about, uh, about, about some aspects of the way our port operates. You need to then take an assessment of your operational processes. We're talking about the way the, the ports operate, not the equipment necessarily. Having done that, you've got to look at the planning of the operations. How are you going to deal with it? Who's going to pay for it? There will be an economic effect to the fact that you, maybe, uh, maybe you can't, haven't got such a big operating envelope for, for manoeuvring the ships. The, the job takes longer. You need more tugs. Maybe you need more pilots. It's all got to be paid for somehow or other. Somebody's got to cough up the money for it. The pilots will need to look at the way they operate within the ships and how they do things. Maybe they need to be trained in, in dealing with more extreme weather conditions than they have done in the past because they're going to be introduced to new... Um, new wind forces or new tidal currents or whatever it might be. And, and ultimately, 
you need to look at the infrastructure that you've got working with. And that might be the pilot boats. It might be the type of pilot boats. Are the pilot boats big enough and heavy enough to work in the extreme conditions you want them to go to sea in? And, and just generally, what, how you operate, is it actually resilient to, to what we can expect um, in, the, in the future? A short resume, 50 minutes in less than five. Thank you.